So we arrived at my destination for tonight. Um, so uh, yeah, it's uh, been a long day, long day. But uh, it's just nice to be able to, uh, first of all, come down to uh, obviously a more of a remote location, um, just on the ground, whereby it's just a zen, it's quiet. It's uh, first of all allows me to, uh, well, allows me personally to, uh, to think about just a bigger picture really in life. Um, obviously, plans for the future. Um, what I'm currently involved with, what obviously the first of all, what the uh, what the end, end goal is, the majority of what I'm planning as well, and uh, working on projects, um, which uh, obviously I love anyway. There's always one of those things that part of any plan, it's trying to work out not only what the end goal is, but first of all, where do I start? Where am I going? When am I going to finish it? Is there a time scale? Is there not a time scale? But all the different scenarios that could play out within that within the, in that within that lifetime as well. So, uh, you know, again, quite a lot of my content is pre-planned. It's it's not the sort of thing that you can just go down the road posting exactly what you want when you want. It's it's a plan of attack, which obviously you know I'm kind of aware of what I'm doing. I'm also I'm also very careful of what I say. Um, my interactions. Um, also as well, for instance, um, what I post, what I don't post, um, and also what the, uh, first of all, what the uh, side effects are with regards to uh, posting certain bits of content, and uh, obviously understanding when you post a video, how the, how all the people are going to interpret it. So it is interesting, it's kind of like, nine times out of ten, I, I might post content, and uh, all the people might see that as more of a well, actually, that's very, that's very selfish. That's very unfair. Or you're betraying something that originally wasn't my plan in the first place. Um, it's based on to, it's based on to emotions really, because on emotions, when you get involved with obviously work colleagues, um, or other genders, and um, obviously getting involved in obviously relationship-wise with regards to obviously partners, um, relationships in business relationships in well in any in any in anything you do in life when you interact with people it gets to a sort of stage whereby you have to be very mindful on how you interact and respond these days and um, how they would take a message that you might have sent in a light-hearted human humanly manner way compared to how somebody would then read that so um it's interesting because obviously for myself when i'm obviously posting content I'm, my whole agenda behind my content is all about positivity, driving forward, the ability to, when you put your mind to something, you can achieve it. Um, and it's regardless to anything else. That's, that, that's my, that, that is my agenda that I'm pushing. Um, obviously, you know, you can obviously look at projects I've done in the past, look at projects I'm currently working on, and you could say to me, well, you know, Mike, some of the way that you've, some of the way that obviously you've gone down the road projecting, for instance, posting certain videos, you, you know, generally speaking, it's kind of like one of those things that people have read it differently. They've read it as like, you shouldn't be doing that. And it's kind of like, well, it's not the fact I shouldn't be doing it. It's the fact that obviously it's more about awareness. It's not the fact of upsetting anybody. It's more the fact of saying, look guys, you know, I need help here. You know, you need to work with me. And that's the sort of way that I have obviously been projecting. You know, I'm here for one goal. I'm here for, first of all, perseverance. Um, obviously, I've got a mission in, in, in mind, and um, obviously, I will continue. You know, it's kind of like, it doesn't really matter what gets in, in my way, really. And uh, having that mindset and that, that end goal will always, always power me through anything. It doesn't matter if I get involved in, you know, general public issues, um, obviously, you know, like, dealing with paperwork, um, like paperwork issues in, in relation to organizations, uh, authorities. Um, it's, it's a form of whereby I kind of like take it as a sort of way that life is a challenge in general. It always has been, and I'm, I'm obviously nothing special. I'm just obviously another human. Um, again, I always, I always try and portray this, that I'm nothing special, because at the end of the day, I'm just a normal, you know, an average, everyday normal guy. Um, I would probably say that I'm more of a male um, than a lot of people, just because I take on, I take on responsibility um, and I drive forward, and nothing, 
nothing that I've ever done in my life hasn't been a success. Um, obviously, I've, I've, I've always had failures with different things. Um, but when you get failures, that tends to be one of those things that you tend to look at and go, right, well, actually, why has it failed? Is it the fact that I didn't put enough time into it? Is it the fact that I didn't put enough finance, you know, financial backing into it? Um, is it down to the fact that I worded it incorrectly? I branded it in, you know, incorrectly? And um, yeah, just looking at, looking at the overall, overall you know, outline to how the failures happened, you can't really say it's been a failure when you've learned from it, because if you've learned from it, you've gained more experience in life. So um, I have had different ventures. I always have had um, through the whole of my life. Um, there are ventures that I took on, um, I created and produced, and I've realized that actually, I probably just might have just launched it at the wrong time, um, really. So it's been one, of the, been one of them things really whereby, you know, Having said that, if I launched it probably a year before or a year later, it might have been different. And uh, I think a lot of time, uh, sorry, a lot of planning goes into the fact that it's looking at what's already out there and also uh, not only what's already out there, but looking at all the people that are actually failing in that industry or failing in life, looking at the Google reviews, looking at like how they branded themselves, looking at the way that, you know, by all means, give them a call, inquire and just see the response that they're going to give. Um, you might find out that, well, I, I, what I find is, is uh, it's interesting because I do tend to go down the roof, obviously understanding other industries very quickly. And um, when people turn to me and say, yeah, I can't do it till next week. It's kind of like next week never happens. It never happens. So straight away, if any communication comes to me, says, yeah, Mike, no problem at all. I'll sort it out next week. I've written that off. It's kind of like, it doesn't work like that for me. It's kind of like, if I need something, it happens immediately. So, I don't wait for, I, I, you know, for me, I, I don't wait, wait for people in life. I tend to, uh, I tend to be very strong-minded and it's kind of like, if I want something, I, I tend to get it. Um, it might take a bit of time, but it's about obviously devoting your time you know, you know, it's more like devoting your time in, in, a, in a manner whereby um, you, can, you, you can not waste time but use your resources wisely to be able to achieve that goal and also sometimes you know that goal it might not happen now it might happen in six months time it might happen in years time but it depends on how persistent you are and generally speaking if you're persistent with anything you will achieve it it's, it's inevitable it's, it's one of the things that I've realised that if you definitely do, wanted to want something to happen if you persevere with it, you will achieve it. And that's what I've realized with the majority of what I've achieved in my, you know, in my life. Um, you could say, for instance, like, there's something not right with all this. There's something like, you know, there's something missing. And it's kind of like, well, I don't know what there is missing about it. It's kind of like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're sat there thinking, what's happening in front of my eyes now? It's just not reality. Then, you know, a lot of people need to think outside the box a bit and think, well, actually, what is reality? Is reality the norm? You know, you go to school, you get taught like everybody else. You then go down the route of thinking, right, you know what? You know, I'm going to go down the route of, you know, get a normal job, work hard, turn off at nine, finish at five, or do you go above and beyond? And when I say going above and beyond, I don't get, I don't believe that I go and get a job because I think, right, I'm going to get paid for it. The way I see your life is the fact that I go out of my way to enjoy and to obviously enjoy what I'm doing. Um, I go out of my way to get more experience, to learn, and to be, you know, and obviously to impact on on on, on you know, knowledge for the future. So, like money aside, money aside, you need to realise that like you can't you can't put price on experience. And when I say price on experience, you might say, right, well, I went and got this job. I didn't really like it, but it's understanding the job, understanding all elements of that job from start to finish, but actually also looking at actually, I did, I, you know, I went and got a job there and I was obviously, you know, I was managed and just, just how people respond to you is kind of like, uh, yeah, that wasn't what was, that wasn't what I thought was going to happen or 
for instance, when people obviously talk down to you, it's kind of thinking to yourself, well, why are they spoken down to me? Is it the fact that I haven't done, I haven't done something right? Or have I gone above and beyond? And thought that's obviously not what they wanted? Or So it's kind of like maybe the way that I see it in, in, in obviously the world today is you can't put price on obviously, you know, let's say for instance, experience. Experience is one of those things that you will always gain, always financially gain from um, anyway. So, so I, I, I strongly recommend that. I strongly recommend people go out there into the, into the world and try different, let's say different, different jobs, but don't do it as a monetary value. Don't, don't think, well, I can go and get a job here and it's gonna make me this, and then say, right, well, I can go get a job here and it, it, it'll make me more. It's a sort of thing that you need to go down the road of trying different jobs to understand where you fit in and where you want to, where you want to accelerate in. There's several jobs that um, the several jobs that I've done in my time, whereby you know I've uh, I've realised um, that I'm better, I, I can do better, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it's just just regardless at, at, at that point. The friends that I've met, the work colleagues that I've met, the people that I've experienced through life and, and as a journey, has really accelerated my you know my opinion on the on on the world in general. Um, even down to the fact of generations, you know, when you look at generations, the way that I was brought up was quite, it was quite strict. But then when I see all the generations now be brought up, it seems to be a different sort of like, well, it's obviously a lot more chilled, a lot more relaxed. And it's not a, you know, it's kind of like, to put it into words, it's kind of like, life's become very hectic and a lot of stress, a lot of like, Building up of building up of um, stress levels that are too much, and just kind of like thinking, right, actually, I'm now overwhelmed with all this, and to sit back and actually go, right, let me make a list of all the biggest issues that I've got in the world, you know. Let's say, for instance, like you know, monetary monetary issues is a big thing right now. So let me pull that down. Let me write that down. Um, stress is a big thing. Okay, great. I write that down. Now breaking down each of those titles into subtitles and putting a list down to say, right, you know what? What are the advantages to this? What are the disadvantages to this? How can I streamline? How can I streamline this to make my lifestyle more relaxed, less stressed, and obviously, how am I going to function for the future? So. For instance, like, you know, obviously I don't believe in, I don't believe in medication for antidepressants. I think obviously the side effects to antidepressants, um, they're not, well, not worth taking. And when I say they're not worth taking, um, again, this is freely freedom of speech. This is kind of like my mentality and my mindset. Um, but by taking, by taking antidepressants, there are side effects to that. And obviously for me, I would much rather people hang around with more positive people around. Because if you've got time to be depressed and time to be worried and concerned about life, then you've gotta, you're not busy enough basically. You need, to, you need to get out, you need to get out and interact with more community groups, with more, with more interaction with regards to health-wise. Um, by all means, you know, go swimming. Go to, the, go to the leisure center, go swimming. If you go to the leisure center, you go swimming for, let's say, half an hour. Just that mindset for that half an hour has changed. It's changed you as a person. It's kind of like, you know, even if you do 10 lengths, it's not like you go swimming because you think, it's a, you know, I've got to go to do some exercise. It's not about that. It's about going swimming on a regular basis and just literally doing 10 lengths, sitting down, relaxing, and actually understanding, right, you know what? I'm gonna to start to do this on a regular basis. Boom, done, sorted. Put it into your diary. Don't let it, don't let things get in the way of going out there and actually having that time whereby you can sit and think about things. Um, that's one of the things that I've always done. I've always gone down the route of trying to put things in place in my life, in my, in, in my diary, whereby I have my own space. Um, for instance, like, I am the most happiest person on my own. Like, I don't need people in my life to be happy. It's kind of like, when you get to that sort of level whereby you are happy under your own accord, then it's, 
it's phenomenal. It's like, you know, it's kind of like you feel, you feel like you're invincible. So that's one thing that I'd obviously say to, you know, to a lot of people these days. Like, obviously life is hard. And obviously others are in different lifestyles than me. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I understand, you know, even down to the fact that like sleeping rough, um, I've done it. I totally get it. I understand it. I get it, you know, and the reason why I put myself to a level of sleeping rough is because when you see people sleeping rough, you kind of like put yourself into that mindset whereby you know what it's like. You know what it's like to live, to, you know, to sleep on the streets. It's, um, you know, and I've, you know, I've, I've been there, you know what I mean? I've, you know, I've traveled, I've traveled and, and you know, and when I say I've traveled, I've slept rough all over. And to be able to understand, you know, what a good night's sleep is to what a good night's sleep isn't, then obviously then you can't relate to that until you've done it. So for instance, like for me, I can't relate to um, obviously people that have kids because I've not got any of my own kids. However, the love, care and attention that I see with obviously, you know, mature adults, that obviously decide to have kids. It's kind of like you see the love between the parents and the, and the child. You know, you can't, I can't obviously, you know, I can't emphasize how much, you know, it, you know, it looks amazing, it feels amazing to know that that child is having an amazing upbringing. And obviously there's a lot of successful families out there. You know, I'm not obviously putting anybody down at all, though. And um, life's about, life is, it is about experiencing building memories and obviously expanding, you know, obviously your friend network uh, and obviously, you know, just being polite on a general basis to interact and to get life experience really. Um, one of the things that I think a lot of people can relate to though is the fact that everybody um, on planet Earth today, nobody is obviously brought into this world on their own accord. So for instance, like me, I wasn't brought into this world on my, my own accord. It's the fact that obviously I'm privileged to, uh, well, I am pretty privileged in life to have parents who have uh, obviously, first of all, you know, allowed me, allowed me to, you know, take place on, on planet Earth today. And, um, you know, it's, you can't quite like, I don't think you actually accept that or realize that until you get to a certain age in life whereby you think, well, actually, you know what, it's, the world's an amazing place. You know, it's, I know obviously life's hard, it never has been easy. And obviously when you're brought up, uh, especially in very, let's say things like strict families and obviously families that obviously are very well established, let's say, um, you are kind of like wrapped in bubble wrap to, this, to a certain extent. Kind of like you don't understand what life or realization of life is until you actually go into the bigger world. So, so for me, it's kind of like one of those things that, you know, credit, obviously credit's due to obviously parents that brought, uh, you know, any child into this world today because uh, and even now today or even, you know, in the, in the past. And again, for the future, you know, it's, it's just credit to, uh, to everybody really. Um, but when you actually look at obviously the bigger picture, your time on, on earth is very, very short. You don't realize this when you're a lot younger, but as, as, you, get, as you get older, you realize that your time is actually running away, away, uh, running away with you. And when I say running away, it's... It's like one of the things whereby when you're at school, everything seems to be a chore. It's kind of like, it's difficult. It's kind of like, you know, you think to yourself, life's hard. It's never going to end. It's kind of like you know, you know, you've got several years ahead of you, you know, and it seems to be going so slow. Months, weeks, you know, even sitting in classrooms today, it feels like you know, you've only just gone to a classroom and you're there for forty-five minutes and you're watching the clock tick, tick by. But then, when you actually get to the sort of age whereby you're in your working life, and obviously as you start to experience life, you start to adapt life into, for instance, like into relationships and. As you start to obviously, you know, buy assets and start to settle down, you realize very quickly that your life is actually very, very short. And obviously weeks, months, and also even days are fast. So it is scary, it is worrying. And uh, it's kind of like one of those things you think to yourself, well, you know, what do I do? Do I, do I like focus? Do I focus upon, let's say work? Do I focus on work? Do I, do I want to focus on like a family life? 
where do I want to establish myself? Um, if I am going to have descendants, um, what's their future? Um, what do I want to? What do I want to teach them? Um, what would I like them to be involved with? So, when I say when I say life's difficult, it's kind of like making a decision and a, and a decision whereby you've got to have some sort of direction to where you want to be. So uh, I know a lot of people these days are quite lost in the big, in, you know, in the you know, in the real world now. It's kind of like one of those things that you know when you're when you're coming out of school. Um, I kind of like knew where I was going in life. I kind of like knew my direction. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to obviously, you know, drive forward. I wanted to obviously, you know, be the sort of be the sort of person that can be more of a, like a problem solver, um, be ambitious, and to um, obviously when things get hard for others, to be one of those people that can come in and say, "Right, well, don't stress, I've sorted it." You know, and it's kind of like to get to that sort of level whereby people count upon you is more the fact that, "Wow, okay, I didn't think about that, Mike." It's kind of like it's not my stress. But what it is, though, is it's the sort of thing that I can stand back and look at the problem from the outside point of view and say, right, you know what? Yeah, that's not cool, but I can change that, you know. So I've kind of like been one of those things at school. I've kind of known where I've wanted to go in the world and what I want to do in life. Um, obviously, I was, I was restricted, um, obviously, by the educational system. Um, I wasn't able to do, the, obviously, the subjects I wanted to do. But overall, um, when I kind of like left school um, I had to pass time a bit because it was kind of like I needed to be of the legal age really to be able to successfully be what I, you know to be successful in what I wanted to achieve so um, having spent the time obviously you know at college and things um, just to basically pass time really it was in a subject that I enjoyed and wanted to do um, and obviously I wouldn't say that obviously going to college was a bad thing for me because um, for me to have focused forward at college not that I did very well at college. I, I, I passed, just, but I don't know how. <laughs> but it was one of those things that just understanding and learning, um, just as more of an experience point of view of what college was like, you know, and obviously the people I met. And uh, it was actually really interesting because in the industry that I actually settled in uh, when I first came out of obviously college, and I went straight, I went straight into the events industry, uh, which is all my mainly hospitality. And then um, it's interesting to see the obviously legacy that I've done um, compared to obviously all the people who were, were on my college course as well. Um, they obviously went to university. They've done extremely well. They've done extremely well and they're doing really well today. So obviously, you know, there's no did no disrespect at all to them. Um, but what they what they did is they obviously went to university, they come out with degrees and you know they're very they're, you know they are very very successful in what they're doing now but i started i started in the same industry as them but several several years before that really um it must have been like three or four years before that my contact base um was outstanding by then as well so by the time that they come out of university and join my industry which i which which kind of like i knew would happen at some point um i'd already had a financial backing behind me that got me to a level whereby I could persevere with where I want to go in direction in the future. So, um, for me, it, it, it's kind of like I started life too early. I realized that I got into the, the real world of actual working and bringing in income a lot sooner than a lot of other, other you know, a lot of all others did. Um, so that basically allowed me to obviously experience, um, you know, experience a much more of a financial financial backing of the, of the, of the, of the world, really. Um, by the time they obviously came out of university, uh, which was, uh, which is obviously was interesting when, when, when they did finally, um, I'd already be, I'd, I'd already spent at least three, three or four years in the industry. Um, and, um, one of my major clients, uh, which I actually uh, did a huge amount of work for, basically they were, uh, they were a company that did obviously, um, like global, global pro projects. And uh, when I first of all jumped on board with them, it was um, it was it was it, it was interesting to understand who they were, the size that they were dealing with, and uh, also understanding the way and the manner that they conducted business. So uh, 
it got to the sort of stage where I did five years um, traveling the world with them. Um, it was uh, one of those things that uh, all I had was my passport uh, in my younger days. We've got to be talking when, you've got to be talking roughly when I was age, I think it was more like age 18, 19, 20s, I think this was. Um, but uh, I spent five years with them. And um, it was a company that sent me all over the world. Um, they, I literally just got correspondence from them via email, uh, which is uh, obviously emails one of my pet hates in life. Um, I really dislike emails, and uh, if anybody sends me an e email, it doesn't really get responded to because of uh, I can't accept it. I think it's a very old school form of technology. Um, but yeah, they used to send me all over the world. So uh, yeah, in my young younger days, I spent literally three months out of the UK completely, never even returned to the UK, just traveling around Europe, and just jumping between country, country, city, city. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it certainly gave me the sort of like very wise period of life whereby obviously I kind of like left home. And uh, I was trying to think actually, it was probably, it was actually probably when I was in my early twenties, this was actually. Um, but yeah, I kind of like was given practically, practically a lot of authority very quickly. Um, and that was really down to the fact that uh, I was just showing willingness really. It was kind of like never, nothing was ever a problem. And when obviously there was a fundamental problem, I just said, yeah, no problem, I'll sort it. I even took on projects and work that I didn't even know how to do myself. It was kind of like, you know, I said, yeah, no stress, I'll sort it. And um, there's even bits of uh, equipment which uh, I'd never ever even touched my hands on in, 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 you know, before. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty rad to, uh, to take on the responsibility, of, like, such a responsible job, and the responsibility of providing a service when I hadn't got a clue myself. So, one of, the, one of the fundamental things that I've obviously got quite a, uh, a skill with is, uh, for, first of all, downloading a manual for anything and being able to read a manual. And if I've got the basic, if I've got the basics to the manual, there's not a lot I can't learn from a manual. So, uh, you know, I might have to read it once or twice or three times. I might have to Google a few words and, you know, and understand, you know, understand what the manual is actually you know, saying to me. But, when I uh, first of all read manuals and then obviously then have access to the global internet of YouTube, there is not a lot you can't learn. And it's, you know, the amount of tutorials there are online now, um, doesn't even, it doesn't even matter my industry, every single industry now, you can look online at tutorials, at all the people, and there's not a lot you can't, you can't learn. And um, even back in the days when uh, obviously, you know, I didn't really know things, it was kind of like once you understood the you know, the general knowledge of, or the, let's say the basic information, there wasn't a lot I couldn't achieve, I couldn't do. And then when you start to understand the basics, you can then start to apply that to other areas and other things. So you start to build knowledge upon knowledge, which then obviously pretty well makes you elite into majority of things. So. What I think I'm trying to say is, is basically is, is, is there anything you need to learn or need to know? I'm not saying that obviously it should be your first point of call to go to YouTube. However, YouTube is one of the main focal points that I use to understand how to do things if I need to learn. So, uh, but anyway, going back to obviously me traveling around for three months, it's one of those things that again, I built a huge amount of respect um, for uh, especially uh, others and also not only others, but having the sort of like manage, management skills whereby I was interacting and dealing with, first of all, not only British um, speaking people, but also I was having to try to learn and how to communicate in a manner which was in a polite and fair way to understand that everyone was happy. So that's probably one of my, that's probably one of my life experiences, which I think was taking me from, let's say for instance, from when I was a child, to obviously be able to interact. We're not only being able to interact, but be able to comprehend and make sure that what I was betraying was fair knowledge and politeness, not only, in, uh, not only to British people, but obviously understanding obviously life as it is in every other country. So uh, I must admit I am quite privileged um, to uh, obviously uh, be able to be obviously English speaking and obviously to be able to learn that as my, uh, as my first language. And it has seemed to be the general um, you know, way that obviously people communicate around the world. Um, 
so yeah, I am quite fortunate for that. And uh, obviously, again, and again, obviously, in due respect, um, I'd obviously always honour or try and honour other languages. Um, so uh, if I obviously was to go and travel to, let's say, for instance, Paris, um, I will do my utmost best to try and speak, you know, in, in, in you know, in French, really, to try and you know, just to be, just just to show a bit of politeness, really. Um, and again, in Germany, etc., as well. Obviously, I'm not fluent. But however, with me being travel, with me being well travelled, you do tend to pick up different knowledge. So, but anyway, right, I'm going to have a quick shower now, and I'll, I'll continue on with this uh, with this speed later.